this Italian brand is loved way more in Japan than it is in Italy. I was shopping on Neiman Marcus website this summer to buy these Christian Louboutin shoes. I needed to add $200 more into my cart to reach the order threshold so I could get the $250 discount they had going on. That's how I found Il Bizonte. I purchased their classic clutch in hot pink for $157, which was originally priced at $200. And this week, I wanted to look into this Italian sounding brand that I have never heard of before. As I researched, I love the story of the brand created by an eccentric Italian designer named Veni De Filippo. And I wanted to share the three things hit me the most during this research before we dissect their clutch in my hand. First, Il Bizonte seemed to be loved way more by people in Japan than the local folks in Italy. The brand has 38 stores in Japan versus 3 in Italy. And that made me really curious. I wanted to figure out why and how this happened. In 1999, Il Bizonte started their great Japanese adventure in their littler terms by opening their first of its 38 stores in Japan. Upon launching into Japanese market, Il Bizonte and its founder Reni immediately became true icons of Made in Italy style in Japan. After checking their products online and feeling the purse in my hand, I'm not surprised though. They have the exact style of leather that Japanese leather enthusiasts crave. I was kind of familiar with Japanese artisans' love for Italian wedge tan leathers and timeless designs through a few brands that I follow and admire on Instagram. I realized many of these Japanese artisans were using the same leathers I buy from Italy from the very same tanneries. Also, during my recent Taiwan visit, I have discovered at least 10 new Japanese brands showcasing the incredible beauty of Italian vegetable tan leathers applied into timeless crafts. This recent discovery made me notice how much my leather taste aligns with the Japanese market. And now I can't wait to go to Japan to explore the amazing artisans and their works of art with leather. The second interesting point about Il Bisonte was the eclectic personality of the founder, Veni De Filippo. You could tell from his images on the website that he had a colorful and free soul that fits so much to a designer and an artisan life. It seems like he has accomplished a great deal since the 1970s when he turned his dreams into leather crafts in his Florence basement with his wife. After being rejected by a leather shop that deemed his designs too original and technically unworkable, he decided to venture into making his drawings into crafts himself. According to the website, he still has a design studio in Florence and a bison museum. Yes, a bison museum. It turns out the guy was obsessed with the bison and collected over 2000 articles about the animal and all of that is now being presented in his museum in Florence. And, you guessed it right, the name Il Bisonte is stemming from that obsession. I feel like I would love to meet this colorful master during my next trip to Tuscany. The region is absolutely the artisan leather capital of the world. I go there quite often to get my vegetable tan leathers from the Santa Croce region. And I will make a separate video to tell the great story of this Tuscany gem soon. Also, while planning this video, I thought maybe I should organize a leather tour to the region with a group of leather enthusiasts to breed in that great scent of Italian leathers. Let me know what do you think about a leather tour in Tuscany with your leather junkie tanner. Lastly, I noticed this little tag in the purse that says this item is completely made in Italy. I happily learned that Il Bisonte intentionally designed a true local supply chain that has a 30 kilometers radius of Florence to source all of its ingredients, from leathers to fabrics and metal hardware. It is very impressive and comforting to see this honest effort to stay true to their mission and to their label. Today, many large brands play legal games to save a few bucks here and there. They design complex manufacturing schemes to make most of a product in Asia and bring them to France, Italy or the USA for a very simple final step so they can legally stamp them with made in France or USA labels. Although this practice is legal, I don't think it's truly ethical and perhaps it's misleading you and me about where things are actually made. Anyways, with their local sourcing model, it turns out Il Bisonte is only using vegetable tan leathers from their region that I absolutely love. And this purse gave me that feeling the moment I touched it. But, as always, we're gonna burn the leather after dissection to test that vegetable tan leather claim. 
Their website says the brand was purchased by their major Japanese distributor company in 2019. I'm curious if anything has changed since that acquisition, as many great brands created by passionate artisans lose their charm after joining a conglomerate trying to save money on all fronts. With that quick background, let's get to the dissection part to see if those nice promises we read are still in the recipe. Before we dissect the bag, I realized the hardware is a quite soft metal and upon messing with it, I confirmed that was the case. It was easy to cut and open, which is perhaps not the highest quality hardware as suspected. And it may be difficult to find a really high quality metal hardware within the 30 kilometer radius to Florence. This might be a limitation due to their supply chain. It's not bad, but it's definitely not a great hardware. As we begin to cut into this bag, I realized another shortcut here. They stapled the fabric lining to the leather. I would prefer to see a very thin stitching here, which would be a lot more durable. Of course, a little bit more work. And I also confirmed after seeing the uncleaned stitch lines that's gonna stay inside the bag which is a sign of the workshop being under time pressure or quantity pressure. Again, for the cost saving measures, these are the signs that gives me the brand is not really paying attention to entire details that we're not gonna see. First, we did the ash test to confirm this was a vegetable tan leather. And as the residue shows, it burned like wood, charcoal, completely black. We don't see any chrome residue. So it checks out as 100% vegetable tan leather. And then we applied acetone to remove the finish on top. As we can see, very minimal amount of plastic finish came off. So this tells me it is a semi aniline finish on top of a full grain cowhide vegetable tanned base. It's absolutely beautiful tumbled leather to give you this variant green pattern with pebbles. It's an absolutely great leather choice from the region that they're coming from. It's a quite clever and simple design. I don't think we need more than two square foot of vegetable tan leather for a project like this. My leather estimate is maximum $14. Other materials and assembly in Italy is about $25. In total, $39, $40 should be able to give us a purse of this size in Italy. Given my estimate of $40 to make a craft like this in Italy, the price tag of $200 is pretty fair in my opinion for a sustainable business. And you can get some discounts to buy it lower than that anyways. So as we see here one more time, great leather products do not have to cost an arm and a leg. If you're only into good leather and craftsmanship, look away from the sparkling brands of the luxury world. You will find great gems like this one to enjoy the true beauty of natural leathers while paying only fair prices instead of luxury store rents and glamorous advertising. A quick savings tip for you guys before we wrap it up. If you like something from Il Bizonte, I recommend checking it on Neiman Marcus website to see if you can save a few bucks through their constant sales. As always, this video is not sponsored by anyone but myself and my own brand Pegai. You can also check out my Italian leather collection at pegai.com Italian to learn more and support my brand. Until next time, stay leather tainted.